It was back in 2007, and I needed to get a new house phone for my apartment, but I didn't have much money to spare. I ended up finding someone who was giving away an old wired phone on Craigslist, and was lucky enough to be the first person who wanted it. Or at least I thought I was lucky. The seller of the phone brought it to my house to drop it off. He seemed pretty normal for the brief interaction I had with him, and as for the phone, it was nothing special, but it was free. So I cleaned it up and hung it and then got it ready to use. I tested it out by calling my parents and when everything was working I was happy to be connected to the world again. But I wasn't exactly expecting what would happen next. It was the night after I hooked up the phone and I was sound asleep when out of nowhere I started to get a call. I hadn't heard the phone's ringer noise yet and I remember thinking about how jarring it was. But I figured I'd get used to it. I got out of bed, walked over to the phone and answered it. Hello? I said expecting to hear a voice that I recognized. Instead, all I could hear on the other end of the line was the faint noise of someone breathing. Who is this? I asked, thinking that it was one of my friends or someone trying to prank me. After a moment of silence, I decided to just hang up and hope that I could get back to sleep. I walked back to my room but barely made it through the doorway before the house was filled with the sound of the phone ringing. I sighed and then picked up the phone again and said, look, it's the middle of the night. I really don't have time for this. But again, all I could hear was the breathing. I was starting to get really irritated, but then the silence was broken. A deep, gravelly sounding voice that was clearly being muffled by something asked me why I hung up before. I couldn't bring myself to respond as I tried to figure out who I was talking to. Don't be afraid, the person on the other line said to me. I don't want to hurt you. Yet. I started to get this feeling that I was being watched, so I kept looking over my shoulder as I held onto the phone. What do you want from me? I asked, but it took the person a little while to reply. But when they did, they led me to something that made me call the police immediately. As I waited for a response, the voice on the other line of the phone said, Why don't you come back into your room? I have a surprise for you. I placed the phone on the counter and ran back into my room as fast as I could, not knowing what to expect. But when I crossed through the door, I could see that all my dresser drawers were now open and I didn't touch them. I looked around the room to see if there was any sign of anyone being in there with me, and that was when I noticed a small picture sitting in the center of my bed. I got closer to it to see what it was, but it was lying face down. I slowly reached out my hand and flipped over the picture, and what I saw sent me running back to the phone. The picture was taken from the hallway, right outside of my bedroom, and in the picture I could see myself talking on the phone. Written underneath the picture in black marker were two words, nice phone. Someone was in my house less than a minute prior while I was on the phone with the menacing stranger. I grabbed the phone off the counter and as I hung it up I could hear the voice laughing on the other end. I dialed 911 as fast as I could and had officers sent to my house. I explained to them what happened and showed them the picture that was left on my bed. The officers had a few more units show up and began searching the neighborhood around my house. Honestly I didn't think they were going to find anyone and I was worried that I would be living in terror for the rest of my life in my own home. I was lucky though and within an hour of searching, the police informed me that they found someone hiding behind one of my neighbor's shed. The man turned out to be the person who gave me the phone. To this day, I don't know how he actually got my number, but I tell you, I'll never use Craigslist again. If I have one piece of advice that I think is worth giving to everyone, it's that you should never get a roommate from Craigslist. They might seem perfectly normal at first, but you never truly know the kind of person someone is until you're behind closed doors with them. I was fresh out of college and for a while I was living in a two bedroom apartment with a friend of mine, but he had to move out and in order to make rent every month I had to find another person to move in. Everyone I knew already had decent living situations, so the only thing I could think of was to put out an ad online. I was surprised when my Craigslist ad was a hit, and I actually had a few people hitting me up about it. I met up with the only person who actually seemed serious, and for the most part they seemed like just a normal person. Ryan ended up moving into the apartment about a week after I met him and all of his paperwork got approved by our landlord. 
and that first day everything seemed like it was going to be fine. However, as the sun started to go down and I started to unwind for the day, I couldn't help but notice a change in his behavior. Ryan began pacing around the house a lot, and when I asked him if everything was okay, he just ignored me. I thought it was weird, but I figured that maybe he was just nervous to sleep in a new place. Eventually, I went into my room and got ready to go to sleep, but before I could actually pass out, I noticed something really strange. Just outside of my door, there was a strange scraping sort of noise. I was lying in my bed and listened for a minute as the noise started to get louder and louder. That was when I realized that something was scratching against the other side of my bedroom door. I figured it was Ryan and he was maybe just knocking weirdly or something, so I called out to see if he needed anything, but I was met with silence. There was no noise at all in the house now, not even that strange scratching sound. Again, I brushed it off as Ryan just being anxious and eventually I was able to go to sleep, of course. It helped that he wasn't standing at my door anymore. The next day I got up and went to work like nothing had happened. But when I got home, I noticed that Ryan hadn't gotten out of his room. I didn't want to disturb him, so I just went about my normal business, and eventually it was time to go to sleep again. But much like the night before, I couldn't get to sleep right away because as soon as I laid down, I could hear someone scratching at my door. This time I decided not to call out and just confront Ryan about what was going on. I stood up and walked over to the door. But before I could reach for the handle, I heard footsteps going from my room to his, and then his door slamming shut. I was really tired, so I decided to just lock my door and go to sleep. The next day, I texted Ryan from work, saying that I would like to talk to him about his behavior at night. I didn't get any response, so I figured I would just take some extra safety measures and actually bought a camera to go above my bedroom door. By the time I got home, I noticed a few dishes in the sink, but other than that, there was no sign that Ryan had even left his room. I sent him another message about it, but he didn't answer his phone despite me hearing the notification sound in the other room. So all I could think to do was to set up the camera and then go to bed. That night, I figured I wouldn't do anything when I heard Ryan at the door, just to see what he would do. And sure enough, like clockwork, as soon as I got into bed, I could hear the sound of him standing outside of my door. I popped open the camera app on my phone and started watching him, and I was pretty freaked out by what I saw. Throughout the night, Ryan had used his finger to slide up and down the door, which must have been the scratching noise that I was hearing. Only this time I didn't stop him, which is when things got really strange. After standing on my door for about 25 minutes in silence, Ryan walked out of view of the camera and then came back in with one of my kitchen knives in his hand. I took in a deep breath as he reached out for the door handle and I was thankful that I started locking it after he moved in. As quietly as I could, I called the police and told them what my roommate was doing, but Ryan must have heard me. While I was on the phone with them, I heard a single loud thud against the bedroom door as if he tried to kick it open, which was followed by the sound of footsteps running through the house. As I waited for the police to come, I watched the camera to see what he was doing, but all I could see was him walking through the hallway with a small backpack on. A few seconds later, I heard the sound of the front door opening and closing. Ryan had run away by the time the police got there, and I had no idea where he could have gone. The officers told me to notify them if I happened to see Ryan again, but after that there was no sign of him. Even the landlord was unable to reach him, and he needed him to finish filling out some paperwork. Eventually I moved out of the house and found a new place to live that I could afford by myself. I don't know, I don't think I could handle another roommate, not unless I knew them first. I had just turned 19, and for my birthday, my parents got me the newest Samsung Galaxy, and I wanted to sell my old phone, so I listed it on Craigslist. Two weeks went by, and by the time I heard from someone who seemed interested in the phone, I had already forgotten that I posted it. Eventually, I got back to the person to see if they were interested in meeting me at the local Walmart, and they explained that they could meet me in the parking lot the following night. But when the time came to drive to Walmart, I got a weird message from the buyer. They texted me to ask if I would mind meeting them in the employee parking lot behind the store. So I asked if they worked there or not. They explained that they didn't, but that it was usually less crowded than the main parking lot. I reluctantly agreed to meet them there, but there was a little voice in the back of my head telling me that I should just cancel. I pulled into Walmart, parked in the back of the store where the employees typically parked, and texted the buyer where they could find me. 
My head was on a swivel as I waited for any sign of someone who would be looking for me. There was no one around, at least not that I could see. After a few minutes, I got a text that said, Hey, I'm here. Meet me by the side of the store. I don't see you anywhere. I looked toward the store, but I didn't see anyone standing there, but I shrugged and figured, what's the harm? I got out of the car and started walking toward the building. There was a chill in the air, but beyond the sound of the wind, it was pretty quiet. As I got closer to the wall, I felt goosebumps starting to form on my arms. I couldn't explain why I was so nervous, but I just knew that something was about to go wrong. I got to the side of the building and stood under one of the lights to make sure that the buyer could see me, and I started to look around. That's when I saw something that was really strange to me. As I looked toward my car, I noticed what looked like someone walking around the parking lot. It was hard to see them since I was standing in the light and they weren't, but I could swear they were walking toward me. I assumed it was the buyer, so I lifted my hand and waved toward them. I planned on greeting them with a smile, but that was quickly wiped away from my face as I noticed another shadowy figure walking through the parking lot. I squinted my eyes to hopefully see things a bit clearer and was horrified when I saw at least four people walking through the parking lot toward me. At first, I tried to tell myself that they were just employees, but my body didn't want to listen to my head. Fight or flight mode kicked in and I took off as fast as I could around the side of the building toward the closest entrance. And it turns out my instincts were right because as soon as I started running, I heard the sound of the people running after me. I managed to make it into the store without any of them catching me, and as soon as I was inside, I walked up to the customer service desk and asked them for help. I told them that I was just chased through their parking lot and didn't feel safe getting back to my car. They told me I could call the police if I wanted, but I wasn't sure what good that would do me. Instead, a group of employees decided to walk me out to my car. They requested that in the future I don't park in the employee parking lot, but other than that, I was just happy to be on my way home. When I got home though, I saw that I missed a text from the buyer. The last thing they wrote before blocking my number was, we're sorry we missed you. I'm never using Craigslist again, ever.